Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to create a Power Automate Cloudflow that will move some files in SharePoint from one, one folder to another, and they will be moved into those folders based on the name of the file. And we're working with two different variables, so we're going to be creating uh, folders if the particular folder does not already exist. So what we'll have is a manual trigger, and this will be set up as a child flow so that our other flows can or will trigger this flow once those flows have completed. The last steps become moving some um, files uh, from one folder to essentially a from a staging folder, you could say, into a folder directory. And that directory is based on both employee name and also month and year. So if I hop over to SharePoint, I can show you the existing folder structure. So our folder structure looks like this. We have these folders that already exist. The ones I'll call your attention to are the timesheet submissions and timesheets submissions directory. This is the staging folder. So there is already a file in there. And then this is the folder that we're moving things into. And within here are folders listed by employee name. So this is an employee name. Automate is the first name, account is the last name. And within each employee folder, there are date folders. So this is October 2024, and within here are the actual files. So this is by month and year. And if the file, it's sorry, if the folder doesn't exist, if October 2024 does not exist, maybe because we haven't reached that month and year yet, then it will uh, create the folder for us and then move the file into it. And if the employee does not exist here within this folder, then it will create the employee folder and create the folder for the month and year and then move the file. So let's get started. I already have a manual triggered flow here, instant cloud flow, and I'll click create. Now, because this is a child flow, I have one additional step where I'm going to um, create an input and we're not passing anything through to this flow, but I do need to put something in here and, and uh, for the sake of passing some variable, which I have an employee name variable from my other parent flow, then I'll just put that in here, but I'm not actually going to pass anything, but you can do that if you needed to for any reason. Now that our trigger is set up, we will add an action and our action will be get files. Now you already need to have a file to work with. And as I showed you over here, I have this folder that I'm working with, this file, excuse me, that I'm working with here. How this automation works is you will set up your file name to look like this. So you'll set up your file name to be, if you want to follow my example, the, the two first words and the underscore, they don't, they don't, are not a part of the flow, but the automate account is a first name. Automate is first name. Account is last name. And then you have October, which is 10, and then 25 is day, and then 2024. And then you have another underscore, and then the file type. So these are the crucial elements here. Automate account, first and last name, and then date. And everything is separated by underscore. So again, working timesheet, those words are not necessary, but that's just how I have the... Um, my file name set up and the underscores are all to separate so we can extract the October and the 2024 and you won't, you, you won't end up with the file name, right? Make it, making it easy. So everything is separated by underscore, including at the end. So that's how the file name is set up. So I'm going to do get files properties only. So I'm going to connect to our site address and then the library name. My library name is payroll management. And then I want to make sure I'm only grabbing the one file that will ever be in there because as soon as the file is in there, this flow runs. 
as a child so and it takes that file out of there so there's never more than one file in there still i'm going to add a top count one so that will only grab one and then also i'm i'm going to select um for limit entries to folder here and then i'm going to select the specific folder that staging folder as i explained so that's in uh, payroll management and then that is in submitted timesheets so so it's grabbing the, the top count uh, from there so I put a one in here um, and it's grabbing that here i'm going to update this get files timesheet submission now that I've done that, I'm going to add in a get file properties action. Get file properties. And then here, once again, you're choosing your site address and your library name. Here's where you're connecting to your file from the get files action. So you're going to do dynamic content and then ID. And then it'll put in automatically put in the four each because this is getting obviously in multiple files, but we're just returning the one file here. So get file properties. Now the next thing is we're going to compose um, some variables for the file name. We want to compose the month and the year. So it's going to be two digit month and then underscore and then four digit year. So we need a compose action. Uh, this is um, a lengthy, a little bit of a lengthy expression that we're going to insert here. And I'm going to walk you through the expression. I'm going to write it in. The, there's two splits in here, as you can see, and this, this expression will be down below. Um, and the split is noted here by the underscore in single quotes. So it's going to split by the underscore. And then you have in between your split expressions, you have this single post underscore, which means that it's going to be joined by your two variables from the split are going to be joined by an underscore. So that's what the con concat expression is doing. So it's splitting to get the um, position four and the position six, and then join them by an underscore. So that's what's happening. And the position four, is actually your month. So how it works is it's an array. So it's splitting everything by the underscore and then working is position zero. And then timesheet is one, two, three, and then date is four, month is four, excuse me. And position six is the year. But that's how that's working. And I'm gonna write this as compose month and year for file name. And I forgot to actually um, put, and I forgot to actually click add. So make sure to do that, of course. And then we'll add our next action. So this is a compose. It's going to be very similar. We're composing the first name and last name for the file name. Let's get rid of this and, extra and. It. Once again, very similar here. Expression, same thing here, right? But position two is first name, position three is last name. And that will be down below too, but it, it, you're doing the same thing. It's You can see name that represents file name of the get file. So click add, that uh, inserts that. Now, next step we set up for moving the file. So that action is move file. 
and I'm going to call this move file into the existing folder because we're going to set up a second move file in a moment. And then here choose your uh, current, the current site address of the existing file. And the file identifier, click the dynamic content and then search here or identifier of your get file properties and then destination site address. So this is where you're going to move it. And according to our structure, we're moving it into timesheet submissions directory under payroll management. So I chose my destination site address. And then here is where I can choose up to payroll management submitted timesheets directory, but that's only part of the process because I now need to add a forward slash and put in my employee section of the folder. So I compose this for file name. It actually should be for folder name. So I'm actually going to cha change these right now. I just realized I'm out saying file. I always do that. File and folder, folder and file. So folder name. Our file is already named. We're not changing the name of the file. So going back here, destination folder. Now click dynamic content here. If you click it here, it will remove your forward slash. So the dynamic content here. And we're first going with the first and last name. So then we do another forward slash dynamic content for the blue button and then month and year, the folder name. And then lastly, if, a, if another file is already there, I like to go with the option move, move file with a new name. Okay. Now we set up our actions to do that, but that's if it's moving it into existing folder, but if the folder doesn't exist, then we need to create a new folder. So search for the action, create new folder, and go into your settings of the action. And where it says run after, you want to change this. So click on this, change it to has failed and remove is successful so that this action will only run if this one fails and this one will fail because it can't find the existing folder. So now choose your site address, choose your SharePoint library name, and then your folder path. So for folder path, you'll need to just go to SharePoint to see how it works. You'll have to put in a forward slash. And then if I go to payroll management, I'll see that my folder is timesheets submission directory. I can just go to rename and then copy this. Cancel. I can paste it in there. And then once again, of course, uh, if I go back here, I can also grab it from here. So I don't know why I did it that way. I could just grab all of this and do it like that. But it does copy those outputs, which is nice. Save some time. Okay. So it's going to create this if it doesn't exist, right? Um, so the last action that we need then is to move, move the folder. Sorry, move the file. We go move file. You can also copy this one, make it quicker. So let's do that. Uh, right click and then copy action. And then go down here and paste an action. And then get rid of that. And then let's rename this uh, move file. Copy, we'll call it move file into new folder. And then we just double check all of this. This will all be um, the same. Okay. Um, because this is a 
child flow, we do need to add an action that will call back to the parent flow. And I don't care. This, do this doesn't need to finish this flow in order to call back to the parent flow. So I, instead of adding that action at the end, I actually will add a parallel branch. And then the action that you need to add is respond to a power app or flow. And so we choose that one and you don't need to set up any outputs unless you're doing something further with that. Um, so now that we've got all of this set up, the only thing left to do, we have to give it a title here and I, I will do that. There we go. And then we'll save it. Of course we have to test it and we will do that. Uh, but first we're going to go back and do one last thing. We need to add this now that it's saved. We need to add this to our solutions. So to do that, go out here and go to solutions. And then in solutions, we add this. So we add this cloud flow to our, uh, parent flow folder solutions folder. So if we go to that folder solutions folder, it's this one for me, it's called payroll management. And then I go to cloud flows. And then I go to add existing automation cloud flow, and then click outside dataverse. And I can paste it in the search over here. And then here it is here. I'll select it and I'll click add. Um, and then that will allow me to set up my parent flow to actually run um, that automation. Now I don't need to trigger my parent flow to make this flow run because it's got a manual trigger and that's uh, one of the nice things about breaking your flows into child flows is that you can e easily test them because you can just click test and run mat run it manually, right? Um, so that's what we're going to do to test this flow. So I'm going to go back to my flows. And then I have our flow that we just created. And then I just have to make sure that I have a a file, I'm just going to go into edit here. I have to make sure that I have a file in SharePoint and then submit a timesheets. So I'm going to have to have a file in this folder for everything to run. Um, and just to show you, there's nothing in this folder now. So we're going to see how it creates the folders with the, um, the right name and date. So I'm going to go and grab Oh, actually, I'm um, sorry. I'm just going to go in here and then create a, we'll create a Excel file. So the name of it, working time sheets underscore, and then automate. That's my first name, account. That's my last name. And then today is uh, 10, 25, 2024, and then underscore. Enter. So now we have the file in there. So I'm going to go, I already saved. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and test. Um, I don't know if this is going to error because I have this and I haven't connected back to my uh, parent flow. So I'm not sure if that's going to create any issue, but we'll find out. I don't think it will. So test and continue. Run flow done close running and then refresh Go back our test failed okay let's find out why let's see System cannot find the file specified. Um, and I think it's possible that the reason is because I just put it in there. So if you run into this issue and you can't figure it out, do this. Take the file, move it out of your folder any to anywhere else, 
might have to wait for it to appear and then put it back in there and then wait for it to appear and then don't have the file open either because you might run into issues that way too so okay now i'm going to test it's good to see those errors when they happen and some troubleshooting techniques that you can use so done let this run i'm gonna just back out it usually runs pretty quick. Test succeeded. Let's go into SharePoint. Now you can see it's gone from there. And then we go into here and it created right now our employee folder name, first name, last name. Click into here and it created our year and month. Click into here and there's our file. So that's going to do it for this video. Appreciate everyone watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.